Two months from now, we will bear witness once again a truly spectacular event. The second launch of Starship. A moment that promises thrilling suspense and will revolutionize our perception of space. Yet, lingering doubts have surfaced questioning the feasibility of Starship's readiness within such a narrow deadline. What is the current situation? What are SpaceX's meticulous preparations for this pivotal point? And, more importantly, why is the second orbital flight of Starship so crucial? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Back on April 20th, SpaceX conducted the first orbital test flights of the Starship and Super Heavy launch system. Things didn't go as planned, although they managed to avoid the worst case scenario of the Starship exploding on the launch pad. The world's largest rocket successfully completed the liftoff stage that day, but about three and a half minutes into the flight, the expected separation did not occur, and the rocket was thus destroyed. There was significant damage, causing difficulties for SpaceX as they not only lost the entire spacecraft but also incurred substantial damage to the launch pad. This raised concerns about the development process of the Starship for the next launch. Engineer and space entrepreneur Jonathan Goff gave his own estimate. I think with the pad damage and the need to rework the launch infrastructure, we're probably at least seven to nine months out from our next Starship and super heavy flight of any kind. However, SpaceX's CEO remained optimistic about the timeline for the next launch. Immediately after the first test, Elon Musk stated that it would take a few months. With SpaceX's diligence, effort, and Musk's visionary approach, they didn't keep us waiting for too long. Recently, Musk provided more specific details about the event in an exclusive SpaceX video, which he says, major launch pad upgrade should be complete in about a month, then another month of rocket testing on pad, then flight two of Starship. This indicates that the timing for the second Starship launch has been set, and if everything goes according to plan, we can expect to see Starship flying in August. The excitement continues to build as we eagerly await the next launch. All of SpaceX is working hard to ensure everything is in nominal condition. Much data has been gathered from the first test flight, which will enable them to avoid a fiery result in the second attempt. Indeed, significant modifications are underway at Starbase to ensure smoother and more efficient launches. One notable enhancement involves the installation of a water-cooled steel plate and a deluge system. SpaceX has started installing the water deluge system. By spraying high-pressure water from the base of the launch pad, the purpose is to absorb some of the heat generated by the engines and counteract the exhaust pressure. This consists of a base formed by steel plates, a cavity in which water will flow, and a top formed by perforated steel plates. Due to this configuration, they refer to this structure as a sandwich cake. I personally liked the description of an upside down shower head, but that's just me. On May 19th, SpaceX released a video in which they tested the WDS in a scaled down version. You can see how water flows out of the holes in these steel plates before igniting the Raptor engine. By maintaining high water pressure, the goal is to withstand the pressure of the exhaust gases. To maintain water pressure, they may use nitrogen, which means consuming additional gas to handle each launch. In fact, nitrogen is used to clean and initiate the cooling of pipes. Moreover, when combined with water, it is also used for the fire suppression system present on the platform on which Super Heavy stands. And in terms of the next ship booster combination, SpaceX has officially announced that Ship 25 and Booster 9 will be the next prototypes to take to the skies. Although similar to Ship 25, there has been limited data obtained from the first launch, prompting the company to attempt another flight with a similar configuration to the previous one. Ship 25 arrived at the test site and was placed on Pad B to perform static fire testing involving all six Raptor engines. On the other hand, Booster 9 is currently being placed inside Mega Bay, where technicians are completing the installation of the latest engines and flight hardware. In this, the modifications are changes to the hardware related to the combustion process of the Raptor engine and a complete overhaul of the thrust vector control system. The TVC is responsible for controlling the nozzle design of the Booster 9 engine, which is currently incorporating an electrically controlled TVC that eliminates the need for complex hydraulic power systems compared to Booster 7. The construction of Starship and Super Heavy never
never stops, leading to the crowded presence of prototypes in the parking area of the construction site known as the Rocket Garden. On May 27th, Booster 10 also arrived in this area without engines and with only one significant difference from Booster 9. That difference is in the common dome, which is a stainless steel dome separating oxygen from methane gas. Compared to before, this new dome is made with fewer parts, thus reducing the amount of welding required and having a much flatter shape. This modification simplifies the production process and once implemented on Starship will allow for greater payload mass. All the rapid and continuous improvements by SpaceX show us the significant progress being achieved toward the completion of Starship. This demonstrates that the short two-month period is not challenging for SpaceX. Currently, SpaceX holds the distinction of being the largest company in the world with a multitude of Starship prototypes. Thanks to the passionate individuals who livestream SpaceX's activities in South Texas, it is evident that the company has as many as 10 Starship prototypes in various stages of assembly, along with a staggering 7 Super Heavy class boosters. This demonstrates SpaceX's tremendous manufacturing capabilities, surpassing all other companies in the industry. Even Bill Nelson, the administrator of NASA, has acknowledged their prowess stating they are hardware rich, meaning they've got a lot of those rockets ready to go, and that's their modus operandi. NASA is hugely invested in the success of Starship since they awarded SpaceX a contract worth nearly $3 billion back in 2021, assigning the rocket a crucial role in the Artemis program. A successful second test launch will bring SpaceX closer to further testing with other prototypes and reinforce its partnership with NASA. It plays a vital role in increasing the reliability of the Starship system, particularly for crewed flights. Demonstrating the capability of launching and relaunching Starship reliably is essential to ensure safety, as even a 1% accident rate would be unacceptable even for airline flights. By accomplishing successful launches, SpaceX can maintain NASA's timeline, advance the goal of landing humans on the moon, and establish a base there. Aside from that, Elon Musk's vision for Starship goes beyond NASA's missions. He aims to dominate the heavy lift market and enable the colonization of Mars, which would require numerous Starship flights. With a successful second launch, SpaceX can progress further toward this goal. The company already possesses multiple Starship prototypes and Super Heavy boosters, and the success of the second launch paves the way for testing the remaining prototypes, potentially forming a Starship fleet. This increased capacity will attract a wide range of customers from space tourists to the Department of Defense, which is exploring rapid cargo transportation on Earth using Starship. Furthermore, the fully reusable nature of Starship allows for rapid cycling and relaunching. Multiple versions of the spacecraft could deliver an astounding 1 million tons of cargo to space per year. Such efficiency would significantly reduce launch costs, possibly by 100 times compared to current rates, and even enable the potential for daily launches. This drastic cost reduction, estimated around $23 per pound, would make space access more affordable and break down barriers. It could lead to space tourism where people pay for trips to visit space hotels at costs equivalent to airfare to Europe. Additionally, space experiments would become highly accessible, allowing even high school science classes to design, build, and send their experiments into space. All in all, the second Starship test launch holds immense significance for the future of the United States aerospace industry. It not only enables NASA's lunar missions and builds confidence in the system, but also opens up possibilities for affordable space access as well as the ambitious goal of colonizing the Red Planet. Space SpaceX's success in the second launch will undoubtedly propel these programs and shape the future of space exploration. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you did tuning in, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you soon.